Tonight's headlines. After the murder of John McMichael, UDA leaders meet in special session. His family and the UDA deny IRA claims that he was involved in terrorism. Also tonight, the reserve policeman who shot into a restaurant in Castle Wellen is jailed for 14 years and how Santa got a lift from the fire brigade. Good evening. An emergency meeting of the UDA Council was convened this afternoon to consider its reaction to the murder of John McMichael, the organisation's political spokesman. Mr McMichael was killed last night by an IRA bomb which blew up his car. There's been condemnation of the murder from all constitutional political parties. And the Catholic primate, Cardinal Thomas O'Fee, has praised Mr McMichael for what he said were his untiring efforts to find a way forward in Northern Ireland. The police, meanwhile, are appealing for witnesses to the attack, which happened outside the UDA man's home in Lisburn. First reports that a bomb had exploded in Lisbon's Hilden Court reached the police shortly before 8.30 last night. John McMichael had little chance of surviving the explosion outside his home. Daylight revealed the extensive damage to his car. Forensic teams have spent much of the day examining the vehicle. Although it'll be some time before exact details of the bomb are known, at this stage it's clear the device contained around two pounds of high explosives. Several options were open to the IRA for its detonation. It's possible, though, that they favoured the mercury tilt switch, which can set a bomb off with even the slightest movement. Mr McMichael had literally no chance of survival. The force of the blast blew windows out of a number of homes. Gardens were littered with fragments from the car's interior. Just as I come out, the first thing was a spray of glass and all on the bang. I could get hit with the glass before I heard the bang. Did you then go over to the car? No, uh, my son, my son, I think, ran over to the car and he spoke in, but all he heard was, uh, like that. And then I think, uh, I think he went upstairs and found his wife and child upstairs and they were in a panic and then I think the house was in fire too. As a senior figure in the UDA, Mr McMichael knew well the risks he was running. As this picture shows, he was conscious of the IRA threat and often searched vehicles he travelled in. The police had also warned him of the dangers he faced. But one associate of the murdered man said Mr McMichael never really believed he was a prime IRA target. I don't think he was all that rigorous because John McMichael was the type of a fella, he, he knew he was on a hit list, but especially around his own hometown, he, he, he thought he was very safe. And uh, I was, I've been in his car many times when John never thought of checking it. He may have had the odd glance, but that would have been probably it. UDA leader Andy Tiri was one of the first to arrive at last night's murder scene. Um, so you used to be in the way she was, she by the whole situation. Yes. Yeah, I'm very bitter. And no doubt the Ulster Defence Association membership will be very bitter about the whole situation also. No doubt about that. It's just another terrible tragedy in a, a series of continuing tragedies in Northern Ireland where we have murder piled upon murder and atrocity piled on atrocity and the government seems either helpless or unwilling to do anything really about it. According to the SDLP, the murder could spell an end to any political initiative in hardline loyalism. Yes, I have no doubt about that. Um, I, I, I can't see uh, you know, anything else but that happening. But I do hope that the leadership within the UDA and within the whole of the unionist, um, you know, the political parties and other groups, that they will realise, fully realise, that is what the provosts are about, that they want a backlash. It suits the provosts for, for Catholic people to be murdered on John the streets so that they can to pretend to be the great defenders. Seventies, when its political group launched a plan for an independent Ulster, which would neither be Protestant dominated nor move towards a united Ireland. He stood as a candidate in the by-election in South Belfast in 1982, after the IRA murdered another unionist politician, the Reverend Robert Bradford, but he took less than 600 votes. He was repeatedly arrested and questioned by police. He was only charged once on the word of a loyalist supergrass, but the charge was dropped. He was the UDA's chief political spokesman, 
But while he was never convicted, it was still widely believed that he was a senior figure in the Ulster Freedom Fighters and was the South Belfast and Lisburn commander the of the UDA. was with the publication earlier this year of the Common Sense document, which advocated a devolved government for Northern Ireland with places in it dependent on their electoral support for all sides. John McMichael was its main author and it won approval from sources as diverse as the SDLP and the Alliance Party, but it was dismissed by unionist leaders. So what will be John McMichael's political legacy? Well, he was known to be a hardliner in loyalist terms, but he didn't see his common sense document as incompatible with that. Given the context of the UDA, mind you, his views were surprising to say the least. And while they had a limited welcome at the time, they've gone nowhere, and it's a cynical political reality that his death probably does little to change that. But it robs the UDA of its chief political voice, and it's remarkable that although nationalists have made many calls over the years for the UDA to be banned, some of the most sympathetic comments on his death today came from members of that community, like Austin Curry, Joe Hendren and Cardinal O'Fee. But why did the IRA decide to kill him? Undoubtedly to cause a loyalist backlash, so the provisionals could once again assume their favourite role of defender of nationalist areas. The murder of 11 people in Enniskillen seriously damaged the IRA at home and abroad. They believe the killing of someone they could present as a loyalist bogeyman would help redress that. Republicans have attacked three other unionist f figures this year. David Calvert of the DUP was shot and wounded last January. While the wife and family of former Ulster Unionist MP Jim Nicholson were held at gunpoint in what was believed to be an ambush intended for Mr Nicholson. And last month, former Assemblyman George Seawright was shot in Belfast and he died two weeks later. The common sense document said the alternative to co-determination was a bloody civil war. At that news conference, John McMichael said this. They were on a, a motorway towards confrontation. It's been on for a long time. It's almost 20 years since this particular uh, period of conflict has, um, uh, has begun. And we're going nowhere, absolutely nowhere. And we believe that we owe it to our members and to the Protestants and Catholics in Northern Ireland to try and find a way out of it. The Ulster Unionist MP, Harold McCusker, said Mr McMichael had been the only one in the Loyalist community with the courage to spell out an alternative to the Anglo-Irish Agreement.